you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series for the RUCA Smart Zone Controller based on a high scale deployment of the version 5.2 release. The videos in this series will show you the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, I'll provide an example of how to configure Layer 3 access control policies and apply them to a wireless LAN. Let's get started. First, I'll log in to a high scale instance of a virtual Smart Zone Controller. Once I'm logged in, you can see that this instance is running version 5.2.0.0.699, or simply referred to as 5.2. Layer 3 access control policies are configured under Firewall, which when clicked, drops down a few submenus. The one we want is the L3 access control menu. Any configured Layer 3 access control policies will be displayed here, and new ones are defined by selecting your domain and clicking the Create button. The first thing you'll need to enter here is a name, as well as an optional description. In this example, I'll create a policy to be applied to a guest wireless LAN, so I'll call it Guest L3 Policy. The default access option defines the default behavior you want the rule to apply. Essentially, if you want to specify which Layer 3 traffic you want to allow, you'll want to select Block to block all traffic that does not match the traffic you specify. If you want to block specific traffic and allow everything else, you want to select the Allow option. Since I want to only block certain types of Layer 3 traffic, I'll set the default access method to Allow. You click Create to define a new policy rule. In the dialog that pops up, we can define the parameters of what we want to filter on. Descriptions are useful to identify the intent of the individual rule, but they are not required. For this rule, I'm going to block SSH traffic destined for the router on the wireless LAN subnet, ensuring wireless guests cannot SSH into the router console. So I'll give a description of block router SSH. Next you select Access. This defines whether you want to allow or block the identified traffic. This will typically be the opposite of what you selected for default access when defining the policy on the previous screen. Since we chose Allow previously, this rule will block. You have the option to select a protocol. As you can see, there are several protocols available to choose from. Since SSH is a TCP protocol, I'll select TCP here. I'm going to match IP version 4 traffic, but I have the option to match IP version 6 as well. This next section needs a little clarification. The source IP, source port, destination IP, and destination port fields allow you to specify a subnet for IPs and a range of port numbers for ports. But if you toggle the button from on to off, it changes from subnet and range to host and single port number respectively. Essentially, it's important to remember that on specifies multiple matching criteria, while off specifies a single criterion. For my rule, the source IP is the wireless LAN subnet, so I'll leave the toggle on and define the subnet of 172.16.200.0 with a 24-bit subnet mask. I'll leave the source port field blank, meaning that I will not filter on this field. And since the destination is the wireless LAN subnet router, or a single host IP address, I will toggle the switch to off and enter the router's IP address in the single field available. And since I'm blocking SSH, I'll toggle the switch to off and enter the SSH TCP port number, which is 22. Finally, I have the option to select direction. When the policy is applied to a wireless LAN, Inbound filters traffic from wireless LAN clients to the AP. Outbound filters traffic from the AP to wireless LAN clients, and both filters traffic in both directions. We'll select Inbound. And finally, click OK to save the rule. This brings you back to the policy configuration window. To show that I can add multiple rules, I'm going to quickly add one more rule to block traffic destined for my internal 10.0.0.0 network. I give a description, select block, I will not define a protocol, I'll select IP version 4, and only populate the destination IP fields with 10.000 network with a 255.0.0.0 subnet mask, and apply this in an inbound direction. Again click OK to save it and return to the policy configuration window. In this window, you have the option to reorder the rules. 
Since the rules are processed in the order displayed, it may be desirable for one rule to filter traffic before another. To move a rule, simply select it and press the button for which direction you want to move it, either up or down in the list. Finally, click OK to save your policy. Next, we'll apply the policy to Wireless LAN. We'll head over to Wireless LANs, and I'll select the guest WLAN I've already configured. Click the Configure button to open the WLAN configuration window, and scroll down to the Firewall Options section. By default, Wireless LANs have a system default firewall profile applied, which does not filter any traffic. In order to apply a single policy to a wireless LAN, you must toggle the Enable WLAN Specific switch to On. This allows you to select a policy from a drop-down menu. Additionally, clicking on the plus button allows you to define a new policy, which is the same process we just went through. But for us to apply our new policy, we'll select it from the Layer 3 Access Control Policy drop-down. Once completed, we can click OK to apply the policy to the wireless LAN. From here, if you select the wireless LAN and scroll down to the Firewall Options section, you'll see the policy applied. This concludes the demonstration of configuring Layer 3 access control policies on a high-scale smart zone controller running Release 5.2. Thank you for taking the time to view this demonstration.